My name is Zandile Batseba Hlabangane. I am from Benoni, which is in the East Rand of Johannesburg. And um, it is a very predominantly white town. So obviously my primary school and my high school was all there. And growing up in a predominantly white primary school was very challenging to say the least because I only firstly had white friends. And because of that, it sort of shifted my identity in more than one way. So, I mean, firstly, I was bullied because of the fact that I only had white friends. I was called a coconut. I was called an Oreo. There were so many different terminologies that I did not even, that I was not necessarily aware of. But um, I always say that I was just too black for the white kids and too white for the black kids. So I always had to just, I was always in between and didn't really know where I fitted in. Because of that, I mean, I obviously it influenced the way I spoke. It influenced the things I used to do, the things I was interested in. And I mean, firstly, I, could, I, I wasn't even allowed to speak my, own, my home language because I was told that um, this is an English school. We don't speak that here. I mean, like as a child, I remember just feeling like I wish I was not black because being told every day that you're dark skinned and you look so this and you're ugly and you end up believing that you're ugly and I did not feel beautiful. I did not feel pretty. I just felt like this dark, you know, unattractive person. Fast forward to high school. Um, I think high school I was more, I was more comfortable with my blackness and because of that um, well, the reason for that was because there were more people who related to me and that um, more people that I could relate to as well. The craziest experience that I'll never forget was in grade eight. Because of the fact that I had now started owning my blackness, I immediately became too much for the white kids. So I, there was a time where there was a petition going around in the classroom and myself and my best friend at the time and like, and like another black student, we had no idea that this was happening, you know, and it was a petition to get us out of the school because apparently we were just too loud and we were <laughs> too black, I guess. And at first, like, I didn't really think much of it. I was just like, oh, whatever, you know, I don't really care. But like now when I think about it, like years later, I'm like, that is, that's insane. I mean, I pay school fees just like they do. I have every right to be there but yet they wanted me out because I was not like them. I didn't look like them. I did not speak like them. I did not act like them. Obviously through growth and exposure and experience, I've learned to own my blackness in many different ways, just from the people I interact with, the people I choose to spend my time with, and the things I listen to, the things I watch, the, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm I'm more about reading black literature. I mean, the music I listen to as well, pro-black music, I'm very pro-black right now because I know and I feel and I, I remember just how awful it was to be pro-white as a black person. You know what I mean? Not being able to own your identity was the worst experience, literally, to date. And right now, oh, that's all I want to do. <laughs> That's all I'm about and that's all I care about because I've lost so much time trying to conform to something that was not even remotely who I am. So I just want to make up for lost time and just work towards completely 100% owning my blackness. And I definitely believe that I'm almost there. Dear Zandile, before all else, you are all. And most importantly, you are most. Do not be warned by where to go, this compass conflict. You may rise in the east and set there too, and all the self-esteem ceilings, the things you've sealed in, unravel. It is okay that you aren't what you feel you ought to be, that you feel you are constantly not, 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 but my love, untie the knots and stand for how you are falling into becoming. Laugh loud, dance unapologetically, they will call it black. You will know it is grandmother, it is mother, it is gold, it is cradle of humankind. It is you, and you have always been enough. 
you are an ode to what you are owed. There are fewer great revolutions than being yourself. Do not trade yourself love, emptying yourself for their conditional like, for your love is mimic of everything that is you, my love. Your love is black. Your love is woman. Your love is all before all else. <laughs>